Welcome back to the shrine. Now you don't have double vision. I actually have two of these brush type amplifiers. As I mentioned in a previous video, the Y stage amplifier in the uh, CNC mill um, went silent basically. <laughs> It all started with uh, error messages and one of the main error messages was uh, related to circular interpolation when the computer thinks that the cutter is somewhere but the cutter is off and that tolerance is bigger than the allowed tolerance so it gives you a circular interpolation error. Then as the problem progressed uh, I wasn't able to do the rapid moves and that's when I basically took apart the oiling system and checked into the saddle to see if the saddle moves freely and then finally it wasn't even doing the home moves so basically this failure mode happened in three separate stages and it was getting progressively worse by time. So what I ended up doing is I uh, looked up eBay for a uh, same part number and I found two options ordered the cheaper one which they said uh, was pulled out of a working machine then USPS screwed up the shipping it basically arrived three weeks later I say three weeks later so this is the old one and then this is the new one and as you can see the part number here is the same so this is the old one SMA 7215-1 and then this is the new one SMA 7215-1 now they look identical but they not completely identical if you look on the bottom of the um, amplifier, there's a sticker. This is the original one. So here's the part number 33000123. And then if you look at the new one, the new one has a sticker and it's the same thing 33000123. So the part numbers are identical, but as you can see, the build is not the same. What we got here is the old one, and then this is the new one. I did not remove the new one from the heat sink. I, I didn't want to take it apart to that depth. I just removed the cover so far. Um, so these are the connectors for the power, and then these are the connectors for the motor, and then these are signal connectors here as you can see so we got all kind of signals coming in and out and then you can see there is a set of LEDs here so there's a green and four red LEDs now this one the new one doesn't have any visible LEDs it mostly surface mounted components it's got a lot of pots here so there's six potentiometers and there's an extra here um, this one as you can see has dip switches so here's a set of dip switches um, it's got switching devices on the bottom it's got a big capacitor here and then you can see the new one has a big capacitor it's got another electrolytic capacitor it's got two chokes here so this one has the chokes in this position this one has the chokes here and then it's got these huge resistors now on the bottom side we got these switching devices so there's four of them that talks about an age bridge full age bridge this one most likely has similar switching devices but as you can see from the bolts here you can see they are in line in the same in the same line so we can we can see the switching devices sandwiched between the board and a heatsink. So I was doing some research 
and I found the manual and downloaded a copy. And when I received the new one, I was hesitant to uh, install it in a machine. I I thought there might be some magic, some devilry <laughs> involved in it, and I was I was right. So, anyways, this is the uh, the manual, the service manual. This is available on Glentex website. And by the way. This was designed by NLM, which was a company in Miami, Florida. And uh, it was basically established by a guy, and his name was Malina. Malina. So NLM is spelled backwards is Malina. If you, if you look from this side, it is Malina. So Malina is a is a Slavic word for raspberry <laughs> that was the name of the guy I think uh, around 2007 it got sold and the company who bought it was supporting it until 2013 but I don't think they make parts anymore um, by the way they outsourced the manufacturing to Glantec so Glantec is in uh, Los Angeles or somewhere in California so anyways, I reached out to Glantec and uh, they sent me this page here. Okay, so what this page does, it compares the old school and the new school. <laughs> and that's exactly what my issue is. That's why I was hesitant to install it. So as you can see, the old school has the dip switches. So these are the dip switches and indeed the board has the dip switches here okay there's a line of dip switches it also has the pots the test points the connectors and then it's got these LEDs so here you can see the LEDs you can see the the five LEDs here and then the new style has basically the same battery connection the same motor connection it's got the same signal connection here so that, that's why you connect the tachometer, you know, reset, all kind of jazz. So this is mostly logic level. And then it has the pots and it's got the test points. So the test points are really important. If you look here, this says all readings are taken between test point on J2 and common on J2 test point 1. So there's basically three test points. And what this does it will set up the servo amp to drive the motor, whatever motor it's driving, properly. And so here you can see that there's two columns. There's a reading for 3.5 newton meter or 4.5 newton meter, and there's a reading for 1.8 newton meter. So this is a small motor, and these are larger motors. And there's three different readings and we need to go and verify this before I install it into the machine. So the motors in my machine are MTS 30M4-59, they are 140 volt 30 amp. If you haven't seen the videos you can go back, I have a teardown video for the servo motor. But according to the nameplate, they are 31 inch pounds, which equals to 3.5 newton meters. So I need to adhere to this column here. So what I need to do is when the servo amp is disconnected, it's not powered up, I need to find the test points and then measure the resistances here and adjust the potentiometers accordingly. So if you look at the layout here, you can see it says all readings are taken between test point on J2 and common on J2 test point 1. So here's test point J2 and you can see the common here on the left side. So that is point 1. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So there's 7 leads. And indeed if you look here there is 7 seven test points in this area. So the first one says that test point five, which is number five here, 
and it's supposed to be 1.05 kilo ohm. And you can see it's 1358, so it's 1350 ohm, and it should be 1050 ohm. Sorry, kilo ohm. So we need to find the potentiometer, which is number two, which is right here. Adjust the potentiometer so that the reading matches that. Okay, but before we are doing so, um, let's look at six. So you can see the next test point here is six, and that is requiring 3,700 kilo ohm, and you can see it's it's pretty much there. So 3768 and then number 7 right here supposed to be 3400 and you can see it's 3600. So I'm gonna go and do the adjustment. I got one of these ceramic screwdrivers. That was one of the best investment I ever did. Great for jobs like this so again we are looking at test point number five it should be 1.05 kilo ohms and we need to adjust the potentiometer number two so that's it says here signal gain and you can see this is signal gain so let's see if it changes the reading looks like the reading is changing it's changing in the wrong direction. So we're gonna go and adjust it to 1050. That sounds like something the truckers say. Maybe that's 1040. There you go, so 1050 kilo ohm. So the next one is number six test point okay and that should read 3700 as you can see and it is potentiometer number four so that's this one here so there you go 3700 kilo ohm so the last one is number seven, test point number seven, and uh, it's potentiometer number five, and it's supposed to be 3400. So if you look at the numbers here, you can see that really the difference between the three and a half and the 1.8 newton meter motors is this one that's the compensation so right now it stands at 3600 so I'm gonna bring it down to 3400 3401 is it good enough <laughs> we will see um, so what we are doing here is related to uh, control these uh, amplifiers can control the DC motor two different ways so if you look into the manual here it says you know there's two different ways of driving the servo motor so it's basically using a pulse width modulation but you have a control system and control system has a feedback so if you remember my teardown video that the DC motor needs uh, you know some kind of voltage and the, depending on the voltage it will have some kind of speed on the shaft but it also has a tack and the tack is giving a feedback to the control and the control based on the tack response can figure out uh, what is the actual speed of the motor and make sure that it doesn't overshoot uh, whatever uh, target it has so right here in the manual you can see dual mode operation the amplifier may be configured for velocity RPM control or current torque control so right now I know that these amplifiers are set up for velocity control 
And so uh, these uh, pods are uh, part of the feedback system, the feedback mechanism. So we are on test point seven, 3400. Here's test point six, 3700, right on the money. And then this is test point five, and that is 1051. It's supposed to be 1050. There's a tolerance on it, plus minus 50 ohm. Which is funny. Plus minus 10 ohm, plus minus 10 ohm. So this is 3400 kilo ohm, and then the tolerance is 10 ohm, 10 ohm, and 50 ohm. Well, anyways, we got it set up. The next thing is. Uh, Put it all back together. So again, this is just a cover that covers this part. There are four bolts. I'm not even sure if I'm supposed to go in as a user, but because I'm an owner, I can basically do whatever I want with this. But I cannot claim warranty. There you go, it's all assembled. So let's go and put it back into the machine, turn it on and see the sparks fly. The beast is alive. And sorry, there's an LED as you can see right there. This is the X, Y and Z. And you can see there's a LED LED lit on them in both cases. So there's an LED right there. There's one here. Maybe if I shut the lights. Okay, now you can see the LEDs. So that just shows that it's turned on and everything is hunky-dory. So this is the Y installed. I switched on the machine, did all the homing moves, and it's working. So here's the Y axis. I'm just doing the jog here, so you can see it's moving both directions. Here's the X, then here's the Z. So everything seems to be working. That servo swap that servo amplifier swap did the trick so I'm gonna go start cutting some metal get you guys back later thanks again for stopping by hope you enjoyed the video come back next time see you bye